Jay Ryan's federal program manager for Security Compass. Jay, it's good to see you again. Thanks for joining me. Are there common roadblocks that you see for organizations in government that are moving to or moving through the process of uh, installing a DevSecOps environment? Well, that's a loaded question, Francis. <laughs> There's not enough time in the day, I think, for us to cover all of them. Uh, but there are some common ones, I think. Uh, Primarily, the government steps into on a regular basis, and there's been a lot of conversation now with Katie Arrington coming out and saying, let's blow up the RMAF and SWIFT, uh, which is great leadership, it needed to happen. It's a great conversation starter. I think what it's really doing is giving us the opportunity to take a deeper look at NIST RMF, how it's being employed, and if it's being employed in the intent that I think it was originally framed with. Uh, it's meant to be flexible. It's meant to be usable. It's not meant to be so rigid as I think others have made it. Uh, and that has become a primary roadblock in this DevSecOps ATO approach uh, inside the Fed government. Mm -hmm. So if we take what Katie has talked about as the conversation starter, where would you like to see that conversation go so that the government gets the best possible outcomes? Absolutely. I think they've done a great job now in soliciting from industry what are the best practices so that we've seen work, mm -hmm. um, how have we attained efficiencies and speed. Uh, so I think they're going to digest that, learn from that. And I think we'll actually see a great outcome around what they end up implementing in the end, uh, which will be fundamental, uh, useful change uh, for accelerating uh, DevSecOps and ATO processes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the best role for industry to play in that conversation and what does government need to bring to the table? So industry is doing a great job with outreach always. I mean, we're always trying to sell, of course, to mm -hmm. the government, but I think uh, especially in this community, DevSecOps as it has uh, kind of organized itself across the last three years. We're really bringing strong, practical approaches to the government. Uh, and in turn, the government's done a great job of actually coming to us and listening and soliciting advice uh, because we are often in the trenches seeing these roadblocks as we run into them on a regular basis and coming up often with very unique or novel ways to get around those. Um, and, and they're learning from that and taking that feedback. So I'm uh, very happy to see that taking place. The current leadership at the Pentagon is not the first uh, leadership group that has tried to kind of change the way the building does business, uh, in particular around software, but more broadly. What do you see happening differently that gives you optimism that this time it might stick? And again, what what does the future of that look like in your view, both from an industry side and from a government side? Absolutely. And that's a great question. Uh, I think the, the major change right now is alignment. You're seeing alignment from the top down in incentivizing the push to make this happen. In the past, it's been, yes, overarching policy, but really no technical guidance and no pushing that decision tree down to the lowest levels to where it can actually take action. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really setting this administration apart. Uh, people in leadership positions in DOD are being uh, empowered to make change happen uh, in this role. So that's something we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head when it comes to that idea of trying to push it down through the organization, that's where I imagine we would see a difference in the way that culture operates and not just a way that people go through the motions of making whatever thing it is that they're supposed to make happen. Is that? Yeah, it's a fair assessment, absolutely. Uh, culture is king uh, within technology developments. Uh, if great people respond well to great culture. Mm -hmm. We've seen that time and time again. Culture's been a cornerstone of DevSecOps. Uh, people process technology, as you likely have heard, for many respondents and, and cultural is a big part of ensuring the people uh, are engaged in that process for sure. All right, what, what are, what's the evolution here that you see? Uh, DevSecOps has come from, uh, uh, just been, we've been at it for a long time in this community, I guess. Where do you see things going and what should people on both, again, both sides, industry and government be thinking about today that maybe they don't have to deal with today, but is coming down the pike at them? Well, I mean, it's the big thing that we've not mentioned yet in this interview, AI, of course. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a future. Where does that sit? Um, what efficiencies do we gain from deploying AI technologies in this process? Um, how do we secure and ensure those AI technologies are secure in their employments? Um, that's where the future is going right now. Uh, Long-term vision is um, across the board, distributed systems, advanced networking, uh, layers of technology that overarching come together to really empower the warfighter, empower the mission, and even from the federal civilian side, really ensure that the technology on the Fed side serves the people and is something that we can trust. Jay, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you, Francis. Thank you.